When I was studying biomedical sciences, I found it really difficult to look at the pictures and movies of animal experiments. I understood that they were necessary for human health and safety studies, but I, I figured there had to be a better way to do these kind of tests. At that time, I also started to buy cosmetics that were not tested on animals because I wanted to do my share, I wanted to do something. And I realized that I wanted to work in a lab and I wanted to contribute to science. And that's when I decided to dedicate my path in research to finding alternative test strategies um, to replace animal testing. I decided that I wanted to focus on research that was working towards replacement of animal experiments. And in my current research, I'm doing exactly that. Regulatory authorities require pharmaceutical companies to perform extensive testing on the medication that they want to bring on the market. Because the authorities want to be sure that the medication is safe and that it doesn't cause any neurotoxicity or seizures. And seizures can result in life-threatening epileptic attacks. Well, these studies are often performed on animals or on animal tissue. Pharmaceutical companies use these animal experiments because there are no alternatives yet. Here in the lab, we try to develop a new alternative method that uses human cells to detect these seizures. And we clearly need this alternative because besides the fact that animal experiments are ethically debated, they're also not predictive for human risk. This is reflected in the high drug attrition rate. Every year, many drugs are taken off the market because they cause seizures in humans. And these seizures were not detected in animal experiments. Clearly, rats are no little humans. Well, because of the advancements in science, we can now make human brain cells from humans. And this is very easily done. We take a very small uh, biopt of a human skin, about three millimeters in diameter. And these cells can be reprogrammed to go back in time to the moment that they can become any cell of our body. And then we can reprogram these cells to become human brain cells. These human brain cells allow us to mimic the human situation more closely and we can move towards a human in a dish. For example, we could also make uh, kidney cells or liver cells, but in my lab we focus on brain cells. Even better, we can combine these human brain cells with a very fancy and state-of-the-art technique that is called a microelectrode array. And when we do this, we create a brain on a chip. Having these brain cells on a chip is very useful because the main task of the brain is to send and to receive signals. In order to do this, these brain cells need to form networks. And with these networks, they communicate with each other. And this communication we call neuronal activity. The neuronal activity of the brain cells we can measure with the microelectrode array technique. We seed our brain cells in plates that have electrodes in the bottom of each well. And after a while, the brain cells start to form networks and they start to communicate with each other. And we can measure the normal communication. And then we can add medication to our brain cells and see what it does to the communication. If the communication increases, it's an indication that the drug could cause a seizure. In my research, I have shown that this alternative method with these human brain cells works. The brain cells start to form networks and they communicate with each other. And this communication increases when we add medication that causes seizures. This is a really essential and promising step towards animal-free neurotoxicity testing. We have tested this now on a small set of compounds. But before pharmaceutical companies can really start using this, we have to test more compounds and show that our human brain cells are better in predicting seizures than animal experiments. However, my findings also show that it's possible to work towards animal-free neurotoxicity testing.